So in March of 2012, we were working on a next generation console game. It was really exciting, but it was a lot of work. And unfortunately, uh, the game got canceled. With these larger budgets, when you crash, you crash hard. Um, and for a company the size of Obsidian to have, you know, like a project canceled like that, uh, it, it had a big impact on us financially. It was really kind of sad, and so we, um, you know, trying to pick ourselves up and figure out what we wanted to do, and 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 you know, we're kind of tossed around ideas. We tried to pitch that game again, um, with with kind of changing the world and things like that. But what it comes down to is, is you know, what are we gonna, what are we gonna do about it? And and the first thing is, well, we got to lay people off. You know, we're watching dozens of people clearing out their desks and leaving. A lot of people who had worked here for years and years, it really sucks in those circumstances because in some cases you have to lay off people who, they're great. Firing or, or letting people go uh, is just horrible. I mean, you talk to anybody who runs a business, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just bad. Um, and, and, it, and for me and the other guys that, that, that run Obsidian, it's doubly bad um, because it's a public statement of failure. It's terrible for the people still at the studio as well because, you know, now we don't have a project to work on. That's what we do here. We work on projects. And when you don't have a project, you feel like a lost soul, kind of. But what's hard about it is that when we do a layoff, it's public. People know. All the publishers know. And, it, and it, we lose two points, you know? We lose five points. We, we, we obviously, because it was obviously our fault, because that's, that's the thing, right? It's like, well, we're the company that had to go through the pain, so we are the ones who must have failed. And as the months went by after that cancellation and we did, still didn't get a project, it got worse and worse and worse. And we kind of had a, a date in mind where we're like, if this date if we pass this date, then we're basically screwed because we were basically going to run out of money. Having this happen makes it hard, makes it even harder to go get the next thing, so that I can keep on paying the people and keep everybody employed that's still at the company even after the layoff. We were all kind of, you know, just coming to work just to come to work. You know, we weren't actually working on anything. I think for weeks after that, people were just really in a funk, and, and like I said, we were trying to get back into the rhythm of pitching to publishers and going and talking to publishers, but we had just been burned really badly, and uh, it really made it difficult to go out and, and have high hopes for what we were gonna do. So whenever that happens, I mean, you just, it's, it's, you, you, you eventually have to get to, like, what do you do? You eventually get to, like, ask, ah, screw it. You know, I would, you know, let's pack up the bags, let's turn the lights off, or you go, okay, what are we gonna do about it? Chris Avalone and I, and I think a few other people at the office, you know, we were kind of discussing, like, oh, we should do a Kickstarter, we should do a Kickstarter, but nothing really got off the ground. I had been looking at Kickstarter for a while personally, but a lot of other people had as well. I think Nathaniel Chapman, a guy who used to work here, actually was one of the biggest proponents of trying to use it for game development. There's a few projects. I think there's a, uh, a dice game that made, like, 200 grand on Kickstarter. We were just laughing about it. We are like, oh, we should put our game up on Kickstarter and see what happens. If a dice game could make 200 grand, that, that means that there's something there. And we talked about it and we talked about it, and then Double Fine did the Double Fine Adventure Kickstarter, and that that pretty much said, yes, you can do it. Because they made, I think they made like a million dollars in a day on Kickstarter. And so we were kind of like, holy crap. It was, it was so amazing to hear what the guys at Double Fine were able to do, just because it was like, wow, wow, this is, we could do this. It reached a certain point where I said to the owners, if I can't be involved in it, that's fine, but we, we should do it. <laughs> I think he went to Fergus and said, we have to do a Kickstarter right now. Like, this is the time to do it. And you should put Adam on the project. And, and then Chris Parker, one of the other owners here at Obsidian, he's, he came and said, why don't we just tell them to do it? 
So it was just me for, I wanna say two months. And I, I was tasked to put together the pitch and kind of generate game ideas and kind of get all that together. And at that point it was Adam and Josh talking about it and figuring out what we could do and, and kind of even off in their own little world for a little while. That day of doom that I was talking about earlier, that day of doom was fast approaching. So we had to hit it out of the park. The first thing I did was kind of got the leads of the studio together. Um, I did a few different meetings, brainstorming meetings. And we're like, you know, we've always wanted to be, to go back and kind of make one of these traditional RPGs. And in one of the meetings, I think it was a meeting with Fergus, Darren, Tim Kaine, Josh, and Chris Avalon. I think three of us kind of had the same idea. I, I said, you know, hey, why don't we make a game that feels like second edition D&D Forgotten Realms? Party based, you make one character, you add companions into the story, like Baldur's Gate. Um, it has that exploration feel where you're kind of out exploring the wilderness and finding all these little adventure locations and you're tied into this personal story that affects the larger world. I think people were on board with the, the high, high concept idea of bringing back the spirit of the Infinity Engine games. That's another thing with Kickstarter is nostalgia is a big thing with Kickstarter. A lot of our fans were looking for this type of game. This type of game wasn't made for 10 plus years. And so it was sort of like a double thing, like it got us to go make something that we, something more traditional, something we love, but also now something we get to own. So after that, that uh, PowerPoint presentation, um, you know, the owners approved the, the concept of the game. So that was like a, a three-week process of coming up with the pitch, uh, the script for the pitch, editing it, and, and filming it 